number of programmes this week. The Corn is Green by Emmeline Williams, with Gladys Young as Miss Moffat and Richard Burton as Morgan Evans. The play adapted for broadcasting by T. Roland Hughes and produced by P. H. Burton. The Corn is Green. The action of the play takes place in Glan Sarno, a small village in a remote Welsh countryside in the latter part of the last century. Mr. Jones has given me an agonizing headache. And if you must indulge in music, will you please not do it in wet? I wasn't indulging in music. I was singing a hymn. There, that's the last book to go on that shelf. And if a hymn gives you a headache, there is nothing wrong with a hymn. There is something wrong with your head, Miss Ronbury. I still don't see the necessity for it. I sing to cheer myself up. What do the words mean? The wicked shall burn in hell. Mr. Jones, translation. Mr. Jones, He says he cut the sweet peas and the rubbish heap is smelling terrible. Oh, dear. His father must put something on it. That's the English all over. The devil is there, is he? Don't take him away. Put a bit of scent on him. Go in the daddy, or who better know here you. Do you sir? I hope he'll have the sense to give the message. It is terrible, isn't it? The people on these green fields and flowery hillsides being turned out of heaven because they cannot answer St. Peter when he asks them who they are in English. It is wicked, isn't it? The Welsh children not being born knowing English, isn't it? Good heavens, God bless my soul, by Jove, this, that and the other. I can't think why a colonel should elect to come and live in this place. Ah, there. I hope he likes flowers. Oh, I've never seen so many books. Hmm. I do hope the castles will not be too feminine. I chose them with such care. Why are you taking so much trouble getting somebody else's house ready for them, Miss Ronbury? Oh, you need not have helped me if you did not wish. Oh, I'm frightened of the spinning wheel, too, and the china. His own furniture is so distinctive. The desk. And the waste paper basket says so virile. Now you'll have two on a string. Him and the squire. <laughs> Mr. Jones. And if I was a bit more of a masher, there would be three. Worldly things, that is your trouble. Please, Mr. Jones, my life is as empty as a rotten nutshell. So get me a husband before it's too late, double quick. Oh, you insulting man. Oh, here's the squire now. Why? Delicious lady, delicious surprise. And the merry afternoon tea is our forebears put it, eh? <laughs> oh. How are you, Jones? Making the most of your half day? Good afternoon, sir. Why, dear lady, were you not at the Travers Ellis wedding? Naughty. I sat next to you at the breakfast. <coughs> oh, my dingo, so you did. <coughs> uh, do you find breakfast? Uh, no sign of a new inhabitant? Any moment now, I think. The pony in the trap met the London train at a quarter to twelve. Hasn't the fellow got his own private conveyance? Oh, I think not. Uh, I hope he's all right. He wrote very civilly to Mr. Jones about the house. Oh, yes. Not club notepaper, I remember, but not bad texture. Funny sort of chap, though, eh? Why? All these books. Two boys, come right in. Oh, that must be something. Please, son, come on, come You must mean the colonel. How gracious. Capital. But who on earth is this woman and this girl? She speak English. I do. Be a dear and hold the temper and I'll go and get the rest. Crikey, a colonel with an Abigail. Well, why don't you say something, girl? 
I never speak till I'm spoken to. <coughs> oh. Uh, well, um, uh, who was that? My mummy. I never had no daddy. My God, these parcels are heavy. What are they? Books. There, yeah, I'll let it emper now. Here you are. Is your employer with you, my good woman? No, followed behind most of the way. What to be heavy now. I'll ever see. Here we are. Here we are. Thought we lost you. I was hoping to pass you, but that last hill was too much for me. There's a smallish crowd already. I don't think they've seen a woman on a bicycle before, so I thought I'd better bring Priscilla inside. Those children out there would wear a bell out. Wattie, can you find someone for her? Oh, I don't know, I'm sure. Oh, that must be in the kitchen in there. We like to hang her with the bike. And... Come on, Bessie, give us a hand. Don't stand there getting into mischief. Uh, good afternoon. Um, so, this is my house. No, it isn't. Oh, oh? Isn't this Pengarth, the name of the building, I mean? Uh, yes, it is. That's right. It was left me by my uncle, Dr. Moffat. I'm Miss Moffat. But surely those letters were written by a man. Well, if they were, I've been grossly deceiving myself for over 40 years. Now this is jolly interesting. Why did it never occur to you that I might be a woman? Uh, well, uh, the paper wasn't sent in. In such a bold hand. And that long piece about the lease being 99 years, don't you know? Was there anything wrong with it? No, there wasn't. That's the point. Oh, I see. And surely you signed your name very oddly. My initials, L.C. Moffat. <laughs> You see, I've never felt that Lily Christabel really suited me. And I thought he meant Lieutenant Colonel. But there was a military title after it. M.A. Master of Arts. A female M.A.? And how long's that going to last? Quite a long time, I hope, considering we've been waiting for it for 2,000 years. And now you know all about me. Uh, what do you do? I'm afraid I don't do anything. Mr. Trevor, he owns the hall. Really? I've never had much to do with the landed gentry. Uh, interesting. <sighs> Au revoir, dear Miss Wanbury. Uh, day, Jones. Well, nobody could say that I've made a conquest there. What's the matter with him? I found the team, um. Looks all right. Good. And the big luggage is coming after. With his lordship. Took a fence and left. I'll just have a look at the upstairs. Took a fence? I do. I'm afraid so. Oh, well, I'm jiggered. What do you think of her, eh? Ain't she a clinker? She is unusual, is she not? She's a clinker, that's what. Terrible strong will, of course. Terrible. Get her into mischief, I keep telling her. Would bring me here. I said no, I said not with my past, I said. Your past? Uh, before she took me up. But what with her, and now I've joined the corpse, it's all blotted out. A corpse? The militant righteous corpse. Ran into him in the street, I did, singing and prying and collecting full blast. And I've been a different woman since. Are you, sir? Yes, I am. So am I. Aren't it lovely? But what was uh, your past? Not fingers. Light fingers? You, you mean stealing? Everywhere I went. Terrible. Pennies, stockings, brooches, spoons, tiddly, anything. And I always looked so pie. Every time there was a do, everything went. And I always knew it was me. Uh, I was just telling him about my troubles. And... Well, don't tell him any more. Is the kitchen all right? Oh, I ain't seed no more, sir. You've arranged my things quite splendidly, Miss Rombry. I do thank you, both of you. I like this house. What's that singing? Boys coming home from the mine. They burst into song on the slightest provocation. You mustn't take any notice. I like it. And those mountains, that grand wild countryside, foreign-looking people. But business... I've heard about that mine. How far is it? It's the Glass of Glow coal mine, six miles over the hill. Mm. We're hoping it'll stay the only one. All our scenery will be ruined. Such a pretty landscape. What's that large empty building next door? Next door? Oh, the old barn belonging to the Gwalia farm before the farm was burnt down. So it's free? Free? Yes. yes. Well, I'm overstaying my welcome. So very charming. Oh, I also. All the volumes are just... I want you two people. Very specially. First you, Miss Ronbury. I used to meet friends of yours at lectures in London. You live alone, you've just enough money, you're not badly educated, and time lies heavy on your hands. The wind grows. Oh, how mean. I should never have thought... Isn't that so? Not at all. When the right gentleman appears... If you're a spinster well on in our thirties, he's lost his way and he isn't coming. Why don't you face the fact and enjoy yourself the same as I do? But a woman's only future is to marry and, uh, and uh, fulfill the duties of... Kettles. Uh, 
I'd have made a shocking wife anyway. But haven't you ever been in love? No. How oh, very odd. I've never talked to a man for more than five minutes without wanting to box his ears. <coughs> but how have you passed your time since... Since I had no hope. Very busily. In the East End for years. I've read a lot too. I'm afraid I'm what is known as an educated woman. Which brings me to Mr. Jones. Mingrove told me all about you too. My conscience is as clear as the snow. I'm sure it is, but you're a disappointed man, aren't you? How can I be disappointed when I am saved? Your father was a grocer with just enough money to send you to a grammar school. But the result that you're educated beyond your sphere and yet fail to qualify for the upper classes. You feel frustrated and fall back on being saved. Am I right? It, it is such a terrible thing you have said that I will have to think it over. Do? But in the meantime, would you two like to stop moping and be very useful to me? Useful? Tell me, within a radius of five miles... How many families are there around here? Families? Oh, there's the squire, of course, and Mrs. Gwent Price in the little class lodge. Quite a dear. Yes, I mean ordinary people. The village? Yes, yes. How many families? Oh, really? Haven't they? There are about 20 families in the village and 15 in the farms around. Many children? What age? Oh, up to 16 or 17. Mm. Around here, they're only children till they're 12. Then they're sent away over the hills to the mine. And in one week, they're old men. I see. How many can read or write? Next to none. Why do you ask? Because I am going to start a school for them. What? Start a school for them? What for? What for? You cheerfully contribute funds to send missionaries to African heathens who are as happy as the day is long, and you ask me what for? See those books? Hundreds of them and something wonderful to read in every single one. These nippers are to be cut off from all that forever, are they? That's right. The printed page, what is it? One of the miracles of all time, that's what. And yet when these poor babies set eyes on it, they might just as well have been struck by the miracle of sudden blindness. And that, to my mind, is plain infamous. My goodness, miss. That's right. I'm going to start a school immediately next door in the barn, and you're going to help me. Ah, yes, you. You're going to fling away your parasol and your kid gloves, and you're going to stain those tapering fingers with a little honest oil. Oh, I couldn't teach those children. I couldn't. They, they smell. If we'd never been taught to us, so would we. We'll put them under the pump. Mr. Jones? Do you know what I'm going to do with that obstinate old head of yours? My head? I'm going to crack it open with a skewer. Hmm? And I'm going to excavate all those chunks of grammar school knowledge, give him a quick dust, and put him to some use at last. I'm a solicitor's clerk in Quina Gum, and I earn 33 shillings a week. I'll give you 34, and your lunch. Well, I have an enormous house to run and the flowers to do. Shut it up, except one room, and leave the flowers to die a natural death in their own beds. I've been left a little money. And I know exactly what I'm going to do with but it. those children are in the mine earning money. How can they I'll come? pay their parents the few miserable pennies they get out of it. And when I finish with you, you, Mr. Ombre, won't have time to think about snapping up, up a husband. And you, Mr. Jones, won't have time to be so pleased that you're saved. Well? I am with you. Good. I have all the details worked out. I'll explain roughly. Of course, we must go slowly at first. But if we put our backs into it... Here we are, three stolid, middle-aged folks settled in our little groove and crammed with benefits. And there are those babies, scarcely out of the shell, that have no idea they're even breathing the air. Only God can know how their life will end. But he will give us the chance to direct them a little of the way. Yes. Yes. We have the blessed opportunity to raise up the children from the bowels of the earth, where the devil hath imprisoned them in the powers of darkness. And bring them to the light of knowledge. Here's the tea. Now put those papers away and come and have it while it's nice not. A night in August, six weeks later. Arroz, you can dig in a hole, John Bakan. This is rum, Robert Roberts, the drink of the devil. It will take you down to hell. <laughs> Get out of my school, you dirty toughie. <laughs> You here again. It's my invite. Oh, I said you were here again. No, miss. What do you mean, no, miss? We isn't here again, miss. What are you, then? We isn't the same lot as this morning, miss. Aren't you? Miss Ronnie Berry, tell us to wait, miss. No. Yes? Five more nigger boys for you. Please, miss, can I have a kiss? 
You naughty boy. You wait till you see Miss Moffat. She'll give you what for. Can I ever kiss Indy? That is the worst thing. Boys and girls, come out to play. Oh, 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 the oh, 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 the oh, oh, come to the roof and come to the phone. Come on, Mr. Jones. Good evening, sir. Good evening. I see you and the lady teacher behind the door. Ooh. You wait until you see Miss Moffat. She will give you what for. You wait until you see Miss Moffat. She will give you what for. You, you wait until you see Miss Moffat. She will give you what for. You... I told you the shape of the bedroom doesn't allow for a door into the barn. You'd... Oh, she isn't here. Um, sorry to keep you waiting, boys, but I have to go across to Mr. Reese, the carpenter, and then I'll be able to talk to you. In the meantime, will you go to the pump in the garden shade and wash your hands through there? You'll find a lantern. Did you um, understand all that? Yes, miss. Thank you, you, miss. Good, I won't be long. Please, miss, can I have a kiss? What did you say? Please, miss, can I have a kiss? Of course you can. Come here. Can I oblige anybody else? No? Once again, I won't be long. Please, Miss, can I have a smart bottom? Oh, 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 oh. 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 Oh, Jones. Oh, the off, Mackenny. No star. No star, Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones, it said in this book. Oh, what's that box? It was. It's just brought the school bell. Really? Oh, Miss Moss. Well, no good. Oh, oh dear. Mr. Reese says he's had a strict order not to discuss lining the roof till the lease of the barn is signed. Who gave the order? That's what I want to know. And when will the lease be signed? Never, it seems to me. Did you call up the solicitors? Yes. They've located Sir Herbert Vesey, but he's now doubtful about letting the barn and will give his decision by post. But why? He'd already said it was no use to him and my references were impeccable. Why? Oh, you look tired. It's been a bit of a day. A letter from the mine to say no child can be released above ground. That's all blethers, but still. A request from the public house not to start a school in case it interferes with beer swilling and games of chance. A message from the chapel people to the effect that I am a foreign adventuress with cloven feet. And Priscilla's had a puncture. A bit of a day. What's that? It's the bell for the school. Oh, is it? Do let us have a peep. It was on St. Talon Monastery before it burned down. Look, it's got the rope and everything. Well, it's good to see it anyway. The mason finished a little tower for it yesterday. Oh, do let us tell those boys to put it up. It'll bring us luck. Well, if it keeps them out of mischief till I'm ready, they can... Uh... Mr. John, do go and tell them. Very good. I'll, I'll take it out to them now. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Jonesy. He's terrified of them. So am I. Oh, they're so big and so black. Oh, here's the letter from the gentleman who owns the barn. I had a good look at the sale at last. What does it say? Sir Herbert still cannot give a definite decision until the 17th. Oh! Another week wasted, isn't it, in fury-eating? Does it mean he may not let you have He it? must. It would ruin everything. Oh, can't we start afresh somewhere there? Oh, I've spent too much on preparations here. Besides, I've felt so right here from the start. I can't leave now. I'm a Christian woman, but I could smack Sir Herbert's face with my arm dropped off. Jolly good evening, teacher. Remember me? Would you mind going outside, knocking, and waiting quite a long time before I say come in? Oh, jolly good. Oh, Paul again, what? But Mr. Moffat, it's the squire. Oh, squire, you must forget you ever saw me in this dress. So ashamed, I shan't be alone. Rat, tat, tat. One, two, three, four, come in. One, two, three, four, forward march. Oh, my dear madam, you're not in class now. I'm rather irritable this evening, so unless there's a reason for your visit, Oh, I... but there is a very important message, word of mouth, from a gent that's just been dining with me, Sir Herbert Vesey. Yes? Oh, do be quick. He's definitely decided that he has no use for the bar. Oh, 
But he doesn't see it as a school, and under no circumstances will he let it as such, so he must regretfully decline, etc., etc. He implied in his first letter that he would be willing to sell. Then some big wig must have made him change his mind, mustn't he? You? I have not called on you, madam, because I have been eyeing your activities very closely uh, uh, from afar. It is with dis disapproval and a dis dis It is unwise to embark on a speech with the vocabulary of a child of five. I'm not going to have any of this damned hanky panky in my village. Your village? My village. I'm no braggart, but I'd have you know that everything you can see from that window, and you haven't got a bad view, I own. Now, my dear madam... And stop calling me your dear madam. I'm not married, I'm not French, and you haven't the slightest affection for me. Oh. First of all, I'm not one to hit a woman below the belt. <laughs> you know what I mean. Always be fair to the fair sex. All my life I've done my level best for the villagers. They call me squire, you know. Tom the Vixen. Jolly touchy. I mean a hamper every Christmas, a whole shoot, and a whopping tankard of beer on my birthday, and on my twenty-first year they all got a mug. Anyway, this buying them out of the mines a lot of gammon. I own a half share in it. Ah, that explains a good deal. Why don't you take up croaky and keep your pecker up? Well, dear lady, anything I can do to make your stay here a happier one? Thank you. I must be getting back. If I know Sir Herbert, my best old port will be there. Wait a minute. Yes. I know I shall be sticking a pin into a whale, but here are just two words about yourself. You are the Squire Barnstable, are you? Adored by his contented subjects, intelligent and benignly understanding, are you? I should just like to point out that there is a considerable amount of dirt, ignorance, misery and discontent abroad in this world, and that a great deal of it is due to people like you, because you are a stupid, conceited, greedy, good-for-nothing, addle-headed nincompoop, and you can go to blue blazes. Good night. I perceive that you have been drinking. Phew. Oh. That was undignified, but I feel better for it. I'm glad because it was plain spoken, wasn't it? Has he been nasty? Oh, so unlike the squire. He was kindness itself. He advised me to go and live in a hole in the ground with my knitting. He's persuaded the owner not to sell. Oh, dear. Uh, well, of course, I always think men know best, don't you? Oh, yes. I'm wearing my muslin to swan. He never even noticed. Oh, what will you do? Sell the house. Take this brainchild of a ridiculous spinster and smother it. Have you got a handkerchief? Yes, Miss Moffat. Why? Want to blow my nose. Sure. Oh, you ought to have had a cry. I love a cry when I'm depressed. Such an advantage over the gentleman, I always think. I must get some letters written to the tradespeople on the mine to let them know we're giving up the school. I suppose we'd better start putting some order into this chaos and get the business over. What are these filthy exercise books doing among my papers? Well, those hooligans brought them just now. They said Mr. Jones had picked them out because they could write English. I set them an essay on how I would spend my holiday. Must have been mad. Listen to this one. If I have ever holiday, I have breakfast and talks, then dinner and a rest. Tea, then nothing. Then supper, then I talk and I go sleep. From exhaustion, I suppose. Holiday time. That carefree magic word. What shall it be this year to boggling among the eternal snows or tasting the joys of Father Neptune? But that's beautiful. Extraordinary. Yes, I might think so too if I hadn't seen it in a book open on that desk. Oh. No, your squire was right. I've been a stupid and impractical ass, and I can't imagine how I. The mine is dark. If a light come in the mine, the rivers in the mine will run fast with the voice of many women. The walls will fall in. And it will be the end of the world. Please, miss, I help with the prayer. Do go on. So the mine is dark. But when I walk through the tan something shaft in the dark, I can touch with my hands the leaves on the trees and underneath where the corn is green. Go on, read it. There is a wind in the shaft. 
Not carbon monoxide they talk about, it smell like the sea, only like as if the sea had fresh flowers lying about. And that is my holiday. Are you uh, Morgan Evans? Yes, miss. Did you write this? No, miss. But it's in your book? Yes, miss. Then who wrote it? I don't know, miss. Oh. Um, Miss Rondbury, will you see to those papers in the study? Oh, yes, of course I will. Now, did you write this? I don't know, miss. What is the matter with it? Sit down. And take your cap off. Spelling is deplorable, of course. Mine with two N's and leaves, L-E-F-S. What was it by rights? Well, a V to start with. I never heard of no V's, miss. Don't call me, miss. Are you not a miss? Yes, I am, but it's not polite. Oh. You say... Yes, Miss Moffat, or no, Miss Moffat. M O double F A T. No V's? No V's. Where do you live? Under the ground, Miss. I mean your home. Oh, Shinamoin, Miss uh, Moffat. Four miles from here. How big is it? Four houses and a beer house. Have any hobbies? Oh, yes. What? Rum. Rum? Oh. <laughs> do you live with your parents? No, by my own self. My mother is dead. And my father and my four big brothers was in the big shaft accident when I was ten. Killed? Oh, yes, everybody was. Mm. What sort of man was your father? He was a mongrel. A what? He had a dash of English. He learned it to me. Did you go to chapel? No, thank you. Who taught you to read and write? Taught? Taught. The verb, to teach. Oh, teach? Who taught you? I did. Why? I don't know. What books have you read? Books? A bit of the Bible and a book that a fellow from the past kitchen nab for me. What was it? The Lady's Companion. Can I go now, please? No. Do you want to learn any more? No, thank you. Why not? The other men would have a good laugh. I see. Have you ever written anything um, before this exercise? No. Why not? Nobody never asked me to. What is the matter with it? Nothing's the matter with it. Whether it means anything is too early for me to say, but it shows exceptional talent for a boy in your circumstances. Terrible long words, Miss Moffat. This shows that you are very clever. Oh. Have you ever been told that before? It is news to me. What effect does the news have on you? It is a bit sudden. It makes me that I... I want to get more clever still. I want to know what is behind of all them books. Mr. Onbury... Can you come tomorrow? Tomorrow, no. I'm working on the 6 till 4 shift. Then can you be here at 5? 5, no. Not before 7, miss. 6 miles to walk. Yes, yes, of course. 7. 7, then. In the meantime, I'll correct this for spelling and grammar. Yes, Miss Moffat. That'll be all. Good night. Uh, uh, good night, Miss Moffat. Miss Rondre? Yes? I've been a deuce of a fool. It doesn't matter about the barn. We're going to start the school in a small way at first, in this room. And I'm going to get those youngsters out of that mine if I have to black their face and go down and fetch them myself. We're going on with the school. Oh, Mr. Jones, we're going on with the school. We're going on with the school. And when I walk in the dark, I can touch with my hands where the corn is green. years later. Anybody seen a Greek book? Ah, here it is. Greek, Miss Moffat? Morgan Evans is starting Greek this month. No. I didn't know you knew Greek. I don't. <laughs> I've just got to keep one day ahead of him and toss the luck. To think that two years ago he hardly knew English. Stuck up teacher's pet. 
You must not think that, Betty, dear. Miss Moffat says he's clever. He always looks right through me, so I don't know, I'm sure. Stuck up teacher's pet. Oh, she has some wonderful plans for him. I can tell by her manner. I think she's trying to send him to one of those church schools to be a curate. Would not that be exciting? I think she's riding for a fall. Let's see. Why? All this ordering him about. I got eyes in my head if she hadn't. Means getting sick of it. I think a lady ought to be dainty. She's no idea. Well, I must get on with my work. Evans! Evans! Yes, Miss Moffat? Finished? Yes, Miss Moffat. How many pages? Nine. Three too many. Boiled down to six. You got those lines of Voltaire? Yes, Miss Moffat. Here. It's just five. Have you walked now? Good and brisk. Here's your cap. Yes, Miss Moffat. But kill two birds and get the Voltaire by heart. If you can ever argue a point like that, you'll do. Back in 20 minutes. And take your pen from behind your ear. Now turn a somersault in bed. <coughs> can you smell scent? Yes. Nice, isn't it? I don't know. I never come across scent before. I, I did never come across scent before. Mm, bright, aren't you? Don't you ever get tired of lessons? Eh? Not quite made me jump. My mummy ought to be back soon, and then we'll know something. What's the matter? Where's she gone? One of our prayer meetings. Twenty miles to shake a tambourine in the open air. I think it's wicked. She ought to be just in time, and then we'll know. Know what? About that horrid Morgan Evans. It's been lessons every night with teacher, hasn't it, since we left the mine. And long walks in between to blow the cobwebs away. But the last week or two, we've been breaking our journey, so we've heard. How do you mean? A glass of rum next door at the Westmore Arms, and then another, and then another. Oh, whoever told you that? A little bird. And if my mummy sciatica's better, she's going to jump up and look over the frosty part, and then we'll know. Guess what's happened to me? What? I'm a sergeant major. Did you jump to see into the bar? Just caught him. Evan, a good swig, miss. Don't you dare tell her, you little dolly mop, or I'll rattle your bones. Was it a nice service, was it? Beautiful, ma'am. They said they hoped the late Sergeant Major was gone where we all want to go. <sighs> but with her having deserted, they couldn't be sure. Then we saved three sinners. Please, Miss Moffat, can I have the money for my ticket? What ticket? The Dragana Fair tomorrow. You said I could go. On the contrary, I said you couldn't. Not in school hours. Are you feeling better, dear? No, Miss Runbury. It's all this sitting down. It's been going on for two years now. My hotel, it ends in everything rotting away. What's rotting away? Betty says she's been sitting down for two years. Lucky. My feet feel as if I've been standing for the same length of time. Um, what are these papers, Ron? Two more accounts, I fear. Oh, yes. Yes, the Lidland Scott and Evans' new suit. Oh, <laughs> I shall have to sell out a couple more shares, I expect. Oh, dear. Not at all. It's easy to squander money and it's easy to hoard it. The most difficult thing in the world is to use it. And if I've learnt to use it, I've done something. My plans are laid, Ron, my dear. My plans are laid. But don't ask me what I'm hatching, because I can't tell you till tomorrow. Oh, you are wonderful. Oh, to Halifax, I'm enjoying myself. And now, Bessie Wattie, what is all this dying duck business? Yes, Miss Moffat. Don't yes, Miss Moffat, me. Explain yourself. My mummy said all these lessons is bad for my inside. She told me they stopped you eating sweets, but perhaps uh, I am telling the lies. Yes, Miss Moffat. What's the matter with your inside? It goes round and round through sitting down. That's what I want is a change. Not you wants castor oil. Adelphus, Adelphus, Adelphus. Adelphus, a brother. There's nothing to prevent you going for walks between lessons. You can you can go for one now as far as Sarah Pugh Postman and see if my new chalks have arrived. Quick march. I'm not going. What did you say? I'm not going. Everybody's against me. I'm going to throw myself off a cliff and kill myself. It'll make a nice coat in the papers, me and Peter, at the bottom of a cliff. I'm going to mad at me and I'm going to kill myself. Nothing's going to stop me. Don't kill me. Oh, dear, she's at it again. See if that won't stop your nonsense. There. Nothing like cold water, Mum. I learnt that with her father. He was foreign, you know. You'll catch her death. Oh, I made a mess of your rug, but I think it's worth it. 
She's got bad blood, this girl. Mark my word. <laughs> and how do you feel after that? I can't remember anything. I'm in a coma. Tom, upstairs, will you? <laughs> we'll sit on our bed for an hour with the door locked, shall we, and try to remember. And next week you'll go away to service and see how we like that. Tom, look sharp about it. I must count her as one of my failures. Fish out of water, of course. Got a snipe species. <laughs> there is such a fish. She'll be more at home in service. Now, where was I? Dendron. Dendron, a tree. Oh, Miss Moffat, I'm bursting with curiosity. Your plans for Morgan Evans. Is it a curatorship? <laughs> no. No, it isn't a curatorship. <laughs> I'll go and have something to eat. Oh, it's you, Morgan. Miss Moffat is having something to eat. And I've been having something to drink, so we are quit. Oh, uh, I will tell her that you're back. I don't want to see no Miss Moffat. You mean I don't want to see Miss Moffat, the double negative? Now don't you start. I like the double negative. It says what I want the way I like, and I'm not going to stand no interferences from nobody. Voltaire, indeed. Morgan, oh, I've never seen you like this before. You haven't, have you? Well, now I come to think of it, I have neither, not for two years, and I'm surprised by myself and shocked by myself. Going inside one of them public houses and putting my nice clean boots on that dirty rail and my dainty lady fingers on that detestable mucky counter, pouring poison rum down my nice clean teeth and spitting it in a spittoon. What's come over you, Morgan Evans? You come back to your little cage, and if you comb hair and wash hands and get your grammar right and forget you was once the middleweight champion of the glass of glow miners, we might give you a nice bit of sewing to do. Where's that bestie Watty sending a mother to spy on me? I'll knock her bloody block off. Morgan Evans, language. Don't you dare use an expression like that to me again. I got plenty of others, thank you, and they're all coming out. I'm going to surprise quite a few. No, I'll, um, I'll drink the milk in here, Watty. Have a good walk, Evans? Yes, Miss Moffat. Can you repeat the Voltaire? Not yet. Well, it's very short. Paper blowed away. Oh. Well, copy it again, will you, and bring it to me? Yes, Miss Moffat, I'll, I'll go and do it now. I hope he's not going to be slow at French. It'll make the Greek so much more difficult. You don't think perhaps all this uh, in his situation is rather sudden for him, I mean... Not for him, my dear. He has the most brilliantly receptive brain I've ever come across. Don't tell him so, but he has. Oh, I know his brain is all right. I'm very pleased with his progress on the whole. Wait a minute. Yes, it is. Ooh. Royalty, the conservatives, and all the grand llamas rolled into one. The squire. The squire. Oh, oh, my. It is indeed, oh, my. I'll run upstairs a moment. You open the door to him, Ron. Tommy. Uh, good afternoon. Your hat, squire. Uh, no, thank you. I'm not staying. Oh, dear. Do you look at Skip? Well, oh, this is the seat of learning. Oh, we are always on the point of a good spring team. How dreadful that we have no refreshment to offer you. Has she given it up, then? You can tell her from me that I'm not here to be insulted again. Oh, I'm sure you aren't. I mean... Last time I was here, she called me uh, an addle-headed nincompoop. Uh, Miss Rombery, dear, my roses are dying. Would you pour out a little water for them? I have such a headache, I don't think I can... Oh. Squire. You wrote to me. Perhaps you've forgotten. Oh, how could I forget? I only thought that after the overwrought fashion of my behavior at our last meeting, you must ignore my very nervous invitation. Uh, Miss Rombry, a chair, dear, for the squire. Well, I've not a great deal of time to spare, I fear. No, of course you haven't. I was just saying to Miss Rombry, he's so busy he'll never be able to fit it in. Uh, Miss Rombry, dear, would you get some water for those flowers? Of course. Excuse me, squire. Tell me, Squire, how did your prize-giving fare this afternoon? Oh, rather a bore, you know. I had so hoped to see you judge. I love flowers. It wasn't flowers, it was cows. Oh. Well, it, it, it was your speech I wanted to hear. Of course, I heard you made such an amusing one at the croquet. Oh, well, did they tell you about yes. that? <laughs> rather a good pun, eh? <laughs> uh, may I sit down? Oh, I do. Yeah, I thought Griffiths the butcher was going to laugh his napper off. Indeed. Well, you know, Squire, that makes me rather proud. Proud? Why? Because he wouldn't have understood a word if his little girls hadn't learned English at my school. Oh, I've never thought of it like that. Oh. Headache? <laughs> Squire, you see before you a tired woman. 
We live and learn. And I've learned how right you were that night. I've worked my fingers to the bone, battering my head against the stone wall. But... I heard you were a spilling to say. Oh, no, no. Oh, it's fair of you to admit it, I must say. You see, in one's womanly enthusiasm, one forgets that the qualities vital to success in this sort of venture are completely lacking in one. Intelligence, uh, courage, uh, and authority. <laughs> well, the qualities, in short, of a man. Oh, come, come. You mustn't be too hard on yourself, you know. After all, you meant well. Oh, it's kind of you to say that. Uh, what about this Jones chap? Oh, he's a dear creature, but... I have no wish to be fulsome. I, I mean a man uh, like yourself. I see. One gets into such muddles. You can never believe. Well, I've never been on your side, but I'm sorry to hear you've come a cropper. Uh, when are you giving it up? Oh, well, that again is difficult. I, I have all my widow's might, as it were, in the uh, venture. And... Please excuse me. It's all right, Evans. Have you copied it uh, on my desk, will you? Yes, Miss Moffat. Excuse me, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, good afternoon, my boy. Nice, well-spoken lad. Relative? No. No, a pupil. He used to be one of your minors. No. I'm glad you thought he was a nice, well-spoken boy. Yes, sir. One of my minors. Interesting. Because... He is the problem. I should like your advice oh, about Oh, what's he been up to? Poaching? No. A bit of mud? No, no, no. Whether or none, anyway. What about that little cockney filly? Betty Watty? Oh, no, I assure you. <laughs> She's a schoolgirl. No, no, no. All these young people growing up together, you know, eh? I think it's good for them. No, no, there's nothing of that sort. But he's a problem just the same, and like a true woman, I have to scream for help to a man. <laughs> to you. Scream away, dear lady, scream away. Well, he's clever. Oh, is he? Good at figures and all that? Because if he is, there's no reason why I shouldn't put him in my mine office as junior office boy. Oh, now, what do you think of that? Uh, no, figures aren't his strong point. Well, you said he was clever. But to begin with, he can write. Oh, oh. Well? Very well. Oh, then he could make fair copies, eh? No. Uh, this boy is... Quite out of the ordinary. Sure? As sure as one of your miners would be cutting through coal and striking a diamond without a flaw. He was born with very exceptional gifts. They must be... Well, they... They ought to be given every chance. You mean he might turn into a, a literary bloke? He might, yes. Well, I'm blowed. How do you know? By his work, it's very good. How do you know it's good? Well, how does one know Shakespeare's good? Shakespeare? Well, what's he got to do with it? He was a literary bloke. Yes, uh, he was good, of course. But how do you know he was? Uh, I heard he was. This little tenant of yours, Squire, has it in him to bring great credit to you? Yes, he is a tenant of mine, isn't he? Imagine if you could say that you had known, well, uh, say Lord Tennyson as a boy on your estate. Rather a lark, was he? <laughs> well, it's a bit different, you know. Tennyson was at Cambridge, my old colleague. Oh, poor Evans. What a pity he wasn't born at the beginning of the 18th century. Beginning of the 18th century? Oh, now, when was that? He would have had a protector. What again? A patron. A pope, you recall, dedicated the famous essay on man to his protector. Uh, here it is. Look. Oh. To H. St. John Lord Bolingbroke. Yes, yes, I have heard of it. Now I remember. Isn't it wonderful to think that that inscription is handed down to posterity? And here's another hmm? To the Right Honourable Earl of Southampton, to your honours in all duty, William Shakespeare. Oh. oh, I often think of the pride that surged in the Earl's bosom when his encouragement gave birth to the masterpiece of a poor, humble writer. Son here, I never thought of Shakespeare being poor somehow. Well, some say his father was a butcher. The Earl realised he had genius and, uh, and fostered it. Hmm. Uh, if this boy really is clever, it seems a pity for me not to do something about it, doesn't it? A great pity. And I can tell you exactly how you can do something about how? it. How? There's a scholarship going. Scholarship? Where? To Oxford. Oxford? A scholarship to Trinity College, Oxford, open to boys of secondary education in the British Isles. My school hardly comes under the heading of secondary education, and I wrote your brother at Maudlin. What? Yes, and he pulled some strings for me, and they have agreed to make a special case of this boy on one condition, that you vouch for him. Will you? My dear lady, you, you take the cake. Uh, can't he be just as clever at home? No, he can't. For the sort of future he ought to have, he must have polish. He has everything else. The background of a university would be invaluable to him. Will you... 
Well, the, the varsity, you know, hang it all. Uh, mind you, we'll never get it. Oh, I know, but he must have the chance. Still, you know, even the mere prospect of one of my oh, minors. Think of Shakespeare. All serene. I'll drop a line to Henry next week. Oh, rather a lark, what? I, must be... uh, I, I should be most obliged if the letter could be posted tomorrow. Uh, w- would you like me to draft out a recommendation and send it over to the hall? You must be so busy with your state. I am, rather. Polka supper tomorrow night. Yes, do do that. Uh, goodbye, dear lady. Thank you so very much, Squire. Happy your conditions and all that. Uh, glad you've come to the <laughs> Thank you so very much, Squire. Not at all. I'm all for giving a writer fellow a helping hand. Oh, tell my brother that, if you like. You know... I can never get over Henry being a don, though I always said he'd end up as something funny. <laughs> that man is so stupid, it sits on him like a halo. What happened? In ten minutes, I've given the squire the impression that he spends his whole time fostering genius in the illiterate. Oh, but how? Soft soap and curtsying with my brain, my heart, and my soul. I've beaten you at your own game, my dear. At my age and with my looks, I've flirted with him. And he's going to write to Oxford. At least I'm going to write to Oxford for him. Hooray! Hip! 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 Hooray! I'm entering my little pit pony for a scholarship to Oxford, child. Oxford University. But they don't have minors at Oxford University. Well, they're going to. The lad is on this earth for 80 years at the most out of a few millions. Let the proud, silly ones grovel and be useful for a change so he can step up on their backs to something better. I was bursting to say that to the Lord of the Manor, so I must spend it on you. Now you've served your purpose, you can go home. But you'd better watch out. I may race into the altar yet. <laughs> Evans! Yes? Come and sit down. Is this your essay on the wealth of nations? Yes. Say so and underline it. Nothing irritates examiners more than this sort of vagueness. I couldn't work this sentence out. What does it say? The 18th century was a cauldron. Vice and elegance boiled to a simmer until the kitchen of society reeked fulminously and the smell percolated to the marble halls above. Do you know what that means? Yes, Miss Moffat. Because I don't. Clarify, my boy, clarify and leave the rest to Mrs. Henry Wood. <gasps> Water with two teas. Oh, that's a bad lapse. The Adam Smith sentence is good, original and clear as well. Seven out of ten. Not bad, but not good. You must avoid long words until you know exactly what they mean, otherwise domino. There you are. Now then, your reading? Burke's cause of the present discontent. Style? Uh, his style appears to me as if there was too much of it. His style struck me as florid. His style struck me as florid. Again? His style struck me as florid. Subject matter? A sound argument falsified by, uh, by the high color of the sentiments. Hmm. The high color of the sentiments. Uh, odd. No, not too odd. Good, stylish. Now for next time. Walpole and Sheridan as representatives of their age. And no smelly cauldrons. By the way, next Tuesday I'm starting you on Greek. Oh, uh, yes? I'm going to put you in for a scholarship to Oxford. Oxford? Where all the lords go? Mm-hmm. The same. I made a simplified alphabet to begin with. Jolly interesting, Arthur Latin. Where have I put it? Have a look at it by Tuesday so that we can make a good start. Oh, and uh, before we go on with the lesson, I found the nail file I mentioned. I'll uh, show you how to use it. Had them built here somewhere. I shall not need a nail file in the coal mine. The what? I'm going back to the coal mine. I don't understand you. Explain yourself. I do not want to learn Greek, not to pronounce any long English words, not to keep my hands clean. What's the matter with you? Why not? Because... Because I was born in a Welsh hayfield when my mother was helping with the harvest. And I always lived in a little house with no stairs, only a ladder and no water. And until my brothers was killed, I never sleep except three in a bed. I know that is terrible grammar, but it is true. What on earth has three in a bed got to do with learning Greek? It has a lot. The last two years, I've not had no proper talk with English chaps in the mine because I was so busy keeping this old grammar in its place. Trying to better myself. Trying to better myself the day and the night. You cannot take a nail file into the Westmore Arms public bar. My dear boy, file your nails at home. I never heard anything so ridiculous. Besides, you don't go to the Westmore Arms. Yes, I do. I've been there every afternoon for a week, spending your pocket money. And I've been there now. And that is why I can speak my mind. I had no idea that you felt like this. Because you are not interested in me. Not... Not 
interested in you. How can you be interested in a machine that you put a penny in and if nothing comes out, you give it a good shake? Evans, write me an essay. Evans, get up and bow. Evans, what is the subjunctive? My name is Morgan Evans, and all my friends call me Morgan. And if there is anything gets on the wrong side of me, it's calling me Evans. Do you know what they call me in the village? T. Bachar called. The schoolmistress's little dog. What has he got to do with you if my nails are dirty? Mind your own business. I never meant you to know this. I've spent money on you. No, I don't mind that. Your money ought to be spent. But time is different. Your life has not yet begun. Mine's half over. When you're a middle-aged spinster, some folks say it's pretty near finished. Two years is valuable currency. I have spent two years on you. Ever since that first day, the mainspring of this school has been your career. Sometimes in the middle of the night when I've been desperately tired, I've lain awake making plans. Large and small. Sensible and silly. Plans. For you. And you tell me I have no interest in you. If I say any more, I shall start to cry. And I haven't cried since I was younger than you are, and I'd never forgive you for that. I'm going for a walk. I don't like this sort of conversation. Please never mention it again. If you want to go on, be at school tomorrow. If not, don't. I don't want your money, and I don't want your time. I don't want to be thankful to no strange woman for anything. I don't understand you. I don't understand you at all. <sighs> <coughs> well, the nations. Hello. Caught me knee climbing down the rain pipe. Oh. Hmm. Perhaps I'm invisible. Mum's gone out. Been spying. People lock me in and take the key out the key out. They can't blame me for listening at it. No, I think she's wicked. Mind your own business. I won't. I like to know about everything. I like doing all the things I like. I like sweets. I don't care if it does make me fat. And I love earrings. I like to shake my head like a lady. Funny. We've never been by ourselves before. You like that song, don't you? That's why I learnt it. You are different when you sing. Am I? You know, you was quite right to put her in her place. Clever chap like you learning lessons off a woman. That's right. You don't have to go to Oxford. Clever chap like you. That's right. What a man wants is a bit of sympathy. Yes. He's fine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're hurting me. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Ten months later, Morgan Evans has passed the written examination for the scholarship and has been called to Oxford for the oral tests. Any news? Not yet. I thought not. Where's the squire? Gone to see if there's any sign. Thank the Lord. That man is really becoming a nuisance. He gave up Henley to be here this week, did you know? You do not appear nervous. Past being nervous. 
If Morgan Evans has won this scholarship, I shan't believe it. Flatly. And if he's lost? If he has lost, we must proceed as if nothing had happened. The sun rises and sets every day, and while it does, we've jolly well got to revolve round it. The time to sit up and take notice will be the day it decides not to appear. In the meantime, Mr. Jones, your report is on your desk, Miss Ronbury. Form two are waiting for your music like a jungle of hungry parakeets. Yes, yes Miss Ronbury. This response is very terrible, isn't it, Mr. Jones? Oh, I haven't. I caught the early train. I knew they would all be watching for me, so I got out of San Morbid and got a lift to Gwine again. Oh, does that mean... Oh, no news, except that I am not hopeful. Why not? They talked to me for one hour at the Viva. That doesn't mean anything. Go on. They jumped down hard on the New Testament question, as you said they would. You are very pale. Better than a raging fever. Go on. I spent five minutes explaining why St. Paul sailed from a town 300 miles inland. Oh, dear. <laughs> Parnell? Parnell. Oh, yes, I was going to stick up for the old chap. But when they started off with that fellow Parnell, I told the tale against him for half an hour. I wasn't born a Welshman for nothing. <laughs> and the French? Not good. I said natural among to everything, but it didn't fit every time. And the Greek verbs? They were sarcastic. Did the president send for you? I had half an hour with him. You did? Yes, but so did the other nine candidates. He was a very kind and grand old gentleman. Sitting in a drawing room the size of Penland Town Hall. I talked about religion the same as you said. Just as you advised? Just as you advised. Mm. Oh, he asked me if I'd ever had strong drink. And I looked him straight in the eye and said, no. Oh. When shall we know? The day after tomorrow. They are writing to you. The villagers are all in their best and talking about a holiday tomorrow. It's very stupid of them because if you fail, it'll make you still more sick at heart. If I have failed, don't speak about it. But we must. You faced the idea the day you left for Oxford. I know, but I've been to Oxford and come back since then. I have come back from the world. Since the day I was born, I've been a prisoner behind a stone wall. And now somebody has given me a leg up to have a look at the other side. They cannot drag me back again. They cannot. They must give me a push and send me over. I've never heard you talk so much since I've known you. That's just it. I can talk now. The three days I've been there, I've been talking my head off. Oh, if three days at Oxford can do that to you, what would you be like at the end of three years? That's just it again. It would be everything I need. Everything. Starling and I spent three hours one night discussing the law. He's one of the other candidates. Brilliant. The words came pouring out of me. All the words that I'd learnt and written down and, and never spoken. I suppose I was talking nonsense, but I was at least holding a conversation. I suddenly realised that I'd never done it before. I'd never been able to do it. How are you, Morgan? I stay, Mr. Jones, not bad for the harvest. A vocabulary of twenty words. All the thoughts that you had given to me were being stored away as if they were always going to be useless. Locked up and rotting away. A lot of questions with nobody to answer them. A lot of statements with nobody to contradict them. And there I was with Starling, nineteen to the dozen. It's all together. Everybody seemed to be walking very fast with their gowns on in the moonlight. The bells were ringing and I was walking faster than anybody and I felt... Uh, same as on the rum in the old days. Go on. All of a sudden, with one big rush, against that moon and against that high street, I saw this room... You and me sitting here studying and all those books. And everything I've ever learnt from those books and from you was lighted up like a magic lantern. Ancient Rome, Greece, Shakespeare, Carlyle, Milton, everything had a meaning because I was in a new world. My world. And so it came to me why you worked like a slave to make me ready for this scholarship. I finished. I didn't want you to stop. I have not been drinking. I know. I can talk to you, too, now. Yes. I'm glad. No sign of the fellow in that daddy. Evans, there you are. Well, good day, sir. They're sending the result through the post. Oh, the devil they are. Do you know I'm finding this waiting a definite strain? Somebody said they've seen Morgan. Day after tomorrow. Oh. Examiner's all right, my boy? Rather sticky, sir. Uh, a lot of old fogies, I expect. Miss Moffat, I told you you ought to have made inquiries at the other place, however. Somebody said they'd seen the, the day, day after, after tomorrow. tomorrow. Oh, how are you, Morgan, dear? The suspense is terrible. I know. Even the little children out here are worrying about... Oh. Uh, Morgan, my boy, are you not exhausted after your journey? Uh, wouldn't you like something to eat? Oh, I am rather hungry, yes. Oh, how stupid of me. What, he'll boil you an egg. Come along. Thank you. Excuse me. Uh, did they spot the Dryden Holler? No. 
You seem very anxious to get him out of the room, Jones. What's the matter? Hello. Well, how do you do? I'm very well indeed, thanks. And how are you, Bloomy? Very well, thanks. Well, what is this? <laughs> I really couldn't say. Good gracious, it's Bessie. Right first time. Hello, Miss Ronvick. How's geography? The world's still going round in circles. Hello, Mr. Jones. Flirty as ever. And to what do we owe this honour? Well, it's like Miss Ronbury, will you please return to your class? They are quite safe. I left Mary Davis in charge. No, you don't, Mr. Jones. We've had too many secrets as it is. Three days ago, she sent money to you. Did you not receive the letter? Yes, I did. And all the others, till I was sick of them. What is all this? Last week, I was glancing through the Midway's Gazette. And I'm here to uh, congratulate a certain young gent in case he has won that scholarship. Oh. But what has that got to do with you? You see, Mrs. Slightly. Don't say it. Don't say it. Four weeks yesterday, I had a baby. Oh. You had a what? A baby. Seven pounds, thirteen ounces. Good God, how God. It's a disgusting subject. It isn't disgusting at all. If I had a wedding ring, you'd think it was sweet. Morgan Evans' luggage. Excuse me, sir. Any news? Well, yes. Bessie! Ma, you do look a dolly ma... Uh, excuse me, sir. Say anything you like. Where'd you get them bracelets? Present. Ah, oh, that's all right. Where have you been, you madam? Turning you into a granny. A gra... Well, fancy. And uh, I should try and have a sleep if I were you. Hello, Miss Moffat. I've just been telling them... You know what? Uh, now I think it's time you tell us who the fellow is. I'm going to take drastic proceedings. That's right. Dear, who is it? Well, as a matter of fact... No. I'll pay you anything. Anything. It's no goodness. It's Morgan Evans. Oh, oh what? I don't think. Oh, Mum. I've been dreading this for months in a terrible way. It's a relief. Bamboo's in me every week. It was in the gut. Lies, all lies, and I was glad to be telling them. I, I can't stop on listening. This horrible, unnatural happened. Don't talk I... nonsense. It isn't horrible and it isn't unnatural. But I should have tried to understand and forestall instead of riding roughshod like a mare with blinkers. The schoolmistress has learned a lesson, but it's a little late now. Where is he? Over my dead body, my girl. She's right, Mum. It's too late. I got a four weeks old baby, kid and healthy and hungry. And I haven't got a husband to keep him, so his father's got to turn into my husband. That's only fair, isn't it? I'm sorry, Miss Moffat, but I'm inclined to agree. I'll call him. Uh, th there, is, there is no need to call him. What's the matter with you? I, I am sorry to say that I have a strong feeling of affection for this young woman. And I am willing to do my duty by rehabilitating her in wedlock and bestowing on the infant every advantage by bringing it up a Baptist. Are you serious? I am always serious. I know it sounds cold-blooded, but will you agree? No, I won't. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but I do draw the line. Oh, please, think well, again. I'd like to oblige. <laughs> but really, I couldn't. Besides, my friend would be furious. Your friend? Ever such a nice gentleman, sporty, quite a swell. Owns a race oh, car. Oh, I've never heard such a conversation outside a police court. I'm seeking the safety of my own quarters. Anything I can do, Miss Moffat. I suppose you wouldn't care to uh, stake a claim? Oh, Doesn't this man of yours want to marry you? He won't talk of anything else. But he won't have the baby. No, he worships me. Ever since I left, he keeps on sending me telegrams. I just got two at the station. I expect I'll get some more tonight, isn't it, Rich? <laughs> Mr. Jones wouldn't consider the baby without me. The baby without you? Your child? But what about your, your mother, love? When I'm your age, I love the idea of a baby. But life hasn't begun yet for me. I'm just getting a taste for it. What do I want with a baby? I could have left it on a doorstep, couldn't I? But I must see it in good hands, and that's why I've come to Morgan Evans. You want to make him marry you on the chance he will become fond enough of the child to ensure its future. Your conscience will be clear, and later you can go off on your own. I shouldn't be surprised. In the meantime, it's worthwhile to ruin a boy on... on the threshold of... I don't know anything about that, I'm sure. More... Wait, 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 wait a minute, wait. There may be a way out. There must be the... Oh, bless us, Mum, I got it. What? Why can't you adopt it? Don't be ridiculous. Would that do you, Bessie? Well, I never would thought... Would it, though? Mm, yes, it would. It would? But, but... What would I do with a baby? I, 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 I don't even know what they look oh, like. Oh, they're lovely little things. Now, it's all arranged. It would be fantastic. Oh, I... do, please. It'll put everything to rights. 
I would know the baby was safe. Morgan Evans need never know a thing about it. I can marry my friend. And we'll all be beauty. Oh, come on, Mom. You've been pushing us about for three years. Now we'll give you a shout. But it's mad, I tell you. Not as mad as taking me in was with my trouble. You're the one, dear. Really, you are. Betty Watty, do you mean that if I do not adopt this child, you... I will have to tell Morgan Evans, and he will have to marry me. I swear that. And do you swear that you would never let Morgan Evans know the truth? I swear. If there are any questions, I'll say it was my friends. Then... I give in. That's lovely. My friend will be pleased. I pop back to the public house for his telegram and send him a nice one back. Goodbye, all. We'll arrange details later, shall we? Are you going to take up a life of sin? I shouldn't be surprised. That cold water didn't really do the trick, Mum, did it? Goodbye. The next settled. I've been waiting for her to go. Why? The squire just came in to see me. The fool, the idiotic fool. Then it's true. He thought I knew. And he said it was for the best. That I ought to be told. God, why should this happen to me? Steady, steady. There's no need for you to upset yourself, my boy. Miss Moffat is going to take care of... of what? Of... I'm going to adopt it. What in hell do you take me for? Morgan, swearing? Miss Yarnati, I will swear some more too if people talk to me like that. I'm going to marry her. I knew this would happen. I knew it. Oh, yo. Now you put it in. No, I'm sure. A, a telegram. You won the scholarship. First Evans, second Favor Isles, third Starling. Congratulations. <laughs> Lock the school door, Watty, will you? Come to the kitchen, Mr. Jones, sir. I'll, I'll make you a cup of tea. Thank you, Mr. Watty. Look at me, Morgan. For the first time, we're together. Our hearts are face to face, naked and unashamed, because there's no time to lose, my boy. The clock is ticking and there's no time to lose. If ever anybody has been at the crossroads, you are now... It is no good. I'm going to marry her. And I am going to speak to you very simply. I want you to change suddenly from a boy to a man. If you marry her, you know what will happen, don't you? You will go back to the mine. In a year, she will have left you, both. You will be drinking again, and this time you will not stop. And you will enjoy being this besotted and uncouth village genius who once showed such promise. But it will not be worth it, you know. There is a child living and breathing on this earth. And living and breathing because of me. I don't care if there are 50 children on this earth because of you. You mentioned the word duty, did you? Yes. You have a duty. But it's not to this loose little lady or to her offspring either. You mean a duty to you? No, Morgan Evans, you have no duty to me. Your only duty is to the world. To the world? Now you're going away. There's no harm in telling you something. Going away? Yes. If you're not to marry her, it would be madness for you to come into contact with a child. So if I am adopting the child, you can never come to see me. It's common sense. But you will be staying here. How can I never come back after everything you've done for me? Watching your career will give me complete happiness. I said there's no harm in telling you something. Now, you have brains, shrewdness, eloquence, imagination, and enough personality. And Oxford will give you enough of the graces. For what? Enough to become a great statesman of our country. Oh, it needn't be just politics. It could be more. Much, much more. It could be oh, for a future nation to be proud of it. Perhaps I'm mad, I don't know. We'll see. I know you're absurdly young for such an idea and that so far you've only got the groundwork. I know all that. But I've got the measure of your intellect better than you have yourself. It's up to you. And now, doesn't Bessie Watty and her baby seem a little unimportant? Yes. Uh, is it all right to, to ring the bell to say holiday tomorrow? Yes. Fine. Fine. Champion. I'll go and ring it. I think that's all. But I, I don't know what to say. Don't say it. I've been so much time in this room. And the lessons are over. I shall always remember. Will you? Well, I'm glad you think you will. 
Please, Miss Moffat, all the village is out, and they say Morgan would come down to the Penland town wall for Wales to see a real talk. No, nah, them deal. Tid, man, tid. They never forgive you. And please, Miss Moffat, Mr. Jones say, is he to say school day after tomorrow, nine o'clock, same as usual? Nine o'clock, same as usual. Yes, Miss Moffat, come on as well. Goodbye, Morgan. <laughs> I had my heart set on coming up to London and having tea on the terrace. Russia, my young lungs! Russia! I. I. Has he gone? Yes. It's all over. No, no, it isn't all over, Mum. Because you're wanted in the kitchen. Bessie sent a gentleman over to see you from the public house. Tell him I can't see anybody. <laughs> you wouldn't understand, Mum, you see. He's only four weeks old. I had forgotten all about that. Poor little fella. Nobody wants him. I only hope nobody will put two and two together, Mum. He's the spit of his father. Oh, this is his birth certificate she sent over. I've got everything else in there and I'll see to the bottle. Come on, Mum. You, you've got to start sometime. Just coming. That's right, Mum. <laughs> Muffet, my girl. You mustn't be clumsy this time. You mustn't be clumsy. The Corn is Green by Emlyn Williams was adapted for radio by T. Roland Hughes. Miss Moffat was played by Gladys Young and Morgan Evans by Richard Burton with Jesse Evans, Philip Phillips, Arthur Phillips, Maisie Amos, Vera Maisie, Llewellyn Edwards, David John Morgan, John Evan Jones, Yorwith Williams and David Richard Owens. The folk songs were sung by the boys of the Aberdare County School under the direction of G.P. Ambrose. It was directed by P.H. Burton back in 1945.